Hello, welcome to uh, today's topic, which is Introduction to Flow Orchestrator. So my name's Tim, I'm currently 10 times certified. I work as a Salesforce professional. I've been a functional consultant, a solutions engineer, a few different roles in the Salesforce ecosystem. Uh, I've got a passion for sharing my learnings with, with, uh, with the Salesforce Ohana and helping people along their Salesforce journey. Uh, which is why I spun up Force Mastery. So what we're going to talk about today, obviously, is Flow Orchestrator. Um, but before we go into that, one thing we need to brush up on is what is Flow. So for those who don't know, uh, Salesforce Flow is a declarative automation tool that allows people to enhance the Salesforce user experience without having to learn an entire uh, programming language. Uh, Salesforce Flow will become the primary tool for declarative automation once workflow rules and process builder are phased out over the next year or so. So there's a number of different uh, Salesforce Flow types. Uh, ultimately, though, they come in two types, which is uh, screen flows or flows that have screens. And then, of course, there are flows that don't have screens. And those are the ones that are run in the background, whether they're triggered by schedule or uh, record action or um, they just sort of exist in the background and are called by Apex or another flow. So that's Flow. Now let's talk about Flow Orchestrator, okay? So Flow Orchestrator is a new feature that's just gone GA or generally available in Spring 22 with the latest release. Uh, simply put, it allows for multi-user, multi-step automated business processes by stringing multiple existing flows together. So I wanna reiterate there, multi-user, multi-step automated business processes by stringing multiple existing flows together. Flow orchestrations consist of stages, steps, flows, and decisions, and more on that in a second. When should you use Flow Orchestrator? So that's why I hopped on a little bit about, you know, multi-step, multi-user. So if you're looking to create an automated, complex, multi-step process that requires actions from multiple different people, you should be using uh, a flow orchestration. So, and this is a business use case here that we'll, we'll build out together a little bit later. So let's say you're tasked with creating an automated HR onboarding process. Uh, and that onboarding process needs input from various different uh, team leaders, depending on the role that that new person is employed in. So hypothetically, uh, in this example, there's three key areas of the business. There's sales, there's service, and then there's training. Okay, so they are a training organization and they've got students. So you're either selling the courses, uh, service, so you're, you're helping uh, students with admin related cases, or you are training them directly. Okay, so that's the three uh, key areas of the business that we'll walk through later in a business use case. So screen flows are going to be used to capture information um, about the new employee. So for example, there's a there's an HR checklist. Okay, and the HR checklist checks things like, you know, has this person filled in their forms? Have they provided their superannuation um, uh, details? Have they provided the bank details? Have they provided anything else that they need? Uh, basically for HR to do a, a background check, create their employee record, uh, and then hand off to either the sales manager, the service manager, or the training manager. Okay, and we'll go through that, all of that in a, in a second. So a perfect example of where you may want to use flow orchestration is this scenario, okay? Stages and steps. So stages and steps are the building blocks of flow orchestration, uh, a little bit different to flows, uh, traditional flows. So stages and steps are new with flow orchestration, and they allow you to logically organize your individual flows into the order they need to be in to achieve your goal. So by organizing multiple flows into stages and steps, Orchestrator can achieve a complex multi-step automation spanning multiple users. So again, multi-step, multi-user, okay? And multiple flows. Stages, uh, stages group steps together. So in this screenshot here, you can see there's uh, one stage here and another stage under it. There's a single step. It's a bit hard to see, but we'll, we'll go through an example in a bit. Uh, and you can split stages up using decision elements, which we will do. Then of course there's steps. So here's a stage that contains one, two, three steps. And steps allow admins to define the flows they run, who they would like to be assigned to each step, the notifications they receive and where the flow itself appears. 
demo. All right, so I'm just gonna go back a few uh, slides where we talked about the automated HR onboarding process. So again, uh, the business here is a training organization. There's three key areas of the business. There's sales, there's service, and there's training. There are other areas as well, but those are the three sort of specialty areas that require the managers of either the sales, service, or training uh, teams to get involved. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an HR onboarding orchestration that assigns checklist flows so a screen flows that contain sort of a checklist of tasks that need to be done to specific users uh, in a sequential order. All right, let's go back to our orchestration. So it looks like a flow, right? You, you've seen uh, Flow Builder a million times, hopefully by now. Uh, so this is this is the flow orchestration. And it starts off with a start element, just like any other flow. If I open it up, we can see it starts on the contact. It's going to be triggered when a contact record is created or updated, and the following criteria are true. So onboarded equals false. Onboarded is a, uh, a Boolean uh, uh, field or checklist check checkbox field. Sorry. Start date is null. False. So start date is not null. In other words, they have a start date, but yeah, they're not yet onboarded, and their record type is this is the employee record type. So they're an employee that has a start date, but they're not yet onboarded. Okay. We only want to run the orchestration uh, when the record is updated to meet the condition requirements. So start elements, you've seen them before, hopefully. Um, and we can see then the next step, whoops, I always do that, spoiler. <laughs> we can see our stage here. So this is our first stage. Uh, it's titled All New Staff. If I open up this stage, I go edit. So if I, okay, we can see here there's a label, All New Staff. There's an API name, description. This is very familiar, again. Uh, very similar to every other flow that you've ever built. Uh, and then we've got the exit condition. Now, the default is when all steps have been marked as complete, the stage is complete. So there's two steps in here. There's HR checklist and IT checklist. So when those two are complete, this entire stage is marked as complete and we move on to the decision element below, which we'll go into in a sec. The alternative here is when a specified evaluation flow returns true, the stage is marked as complete which we don't want in this case. We basically just want to make sure that both HR and IT have performed their, uh, their checklists, okay? Now let's have a look at a step. If I click on a step within a stage, so we can see the entry condition. When the stage starts, the step starts. So as soon as we meet this criteria, the first stage is called, then we call the HR checklist step, okay? Now it's gonna, it says select the flow. In this case, I don't actually have a HR checklist flow in this org. Uh, so I'll just use this create a case placeholder screen flow. Uh, I'm specifying the record page where it should show up. So let's say I create an employee record uh, or I update an employee record to meet those criteria. We want it to show up on that contacts page, okay? The user that we want to assign to that flow, again, it's a screen flow. So we're now automating screen flows, which is something that you haven't been able to do um, in the past. There's no you know, record triggered screen flow. Uh, like there is a record triggered flow orchestration that we can assign a screen flow as a step, which is pretty cool. So in this case, I'm assigning the HR manager, which just happens to be myself. Uh, in this demo, I will wear a lot of hats, as you'll see. <laughs> um, and then finally, the exit condition, exactly the same. So it's either when a specified evaluation flow equals two, true, sorry, or when the assigned user has completed the screen flow, the step is marked as complete, which is what we want. Then, uh, with the IT checklist, we can see here that the entry condition is when another step is marked complete, the step starts. So in this case, when the HR manager has done their bit, then the IT manager's checklist will begin. Okay, so if I go back, we can see the difference condition when the stage starts, the step starts, that's for HR. But then once the HR checklist has been completed, the IT one only begins once HR is complete. Okay, the flow, uh, again, just a placeholder case, but imagine this says IT checklist. Again, we want it to display on the contact ID of the employee. We're assigning it to the IT manager, which again, happens to be me in this case. And the exit condition is again, once the assigned user has completed the flow, the step is marked complete. Now, let's move on to something a little bit more complex. So we've started, we've got an employee that meets criteria. Um, we, our HR manager has completed their steps the checklist, so has the IT person. Then we move forward to a decision. 
Okay, so depending on the type of employee that they are, if I open up this decision element, if they are a sales team member, so record employee type equals sales, we're gonna do one set of actions, support, different set, training, a different set, and none of the, th the key three, again, there are other staff members, uh, but there's no specific additional steps for them. So we can see if they're a sales team member, we're gonna move on to uh, this stage here, which again, exit condition, when all stages, uh, sorry, when all steps have marked as complete, the stage is complete. In this case, very, very similar sort of thing. So when the sales manager, um, when they're a sales team member, they are uh, sent through to the sales team manager who fills in a sales manager checklist. Again, pretend this flow says sales manager checklist. The record ID is the contact ID. So we wanna show this screen flow uh, as a work item on the contact ID. It's assigned to the sales manager, which again, it's just me in this case. And when it's complete, we move on. Same thing, by the way, for support and training, except, you know, we would assign it to the support manager as the user and use the support manager checklist. And same over here with training. Okay, so there's a decision as to whether they're sales, support, training, or somebody completely different. If they're just another uh, member of the business that's not related to sales, support, or training, all they need to do here is just go HR, IT, and then down this path here, and they all meet back and they do the final checks by the HR manager. So once the HR manager has uh, basically created their employee record, set everything up correctly, handed off to IT to set up all of their user accounts and their, uh, you know, assign them a laptop or whatever they need to do their job, it hands off then uh, to either the sales support training or no one uh, to do a few additional steps. So if it's sales, they need to be granted access to uh, you know, their leads, for example, the sales manager would go and assign them some leads. If it's support, they'd be uh, added to queues and they'd be, um, you know, onboarded uh, and trained up on how to be a support member. Same thing with training. Uh, anything they need to know would be specific to them. And then finally, once HR is done, uh, the final step would be, you know, final, final uh, HR checklist. It would be on the contact ID again. User would be the HR manager. And finally, when it is complete, it is over. Now, I have created a new contact here, Sam Smith. Uh, Sam Smith is part of the Party Poppers Inc. account, uh, which happens to be the business that we're operating under. Now, we can see here that onboarded, he is not. Uh, start date, 24th of the 3rd, 2022. And the employee type is support. So if we follow this through, uh, Sam will follow this through. Uh, HR will be done, IT will be done. We're expecting then uh, the support specific uh, checklist to be completed by the support manager before concluding the onboarding checklist. Um, we can see here what that looks like. So we're up to the first step. I'm just gonna move all the way to the beginning, HR checklist. So we can see against the Sam Smith contact, we can see the orchestrations, the new staff flow orchestration, which if I go back here, that's what this is called. Uh, we're up to the stage, all new staff, and the step HR checklist, all staff. So stage, all new staff. Uh, step is HR checklist, all staff. Okay, and this is the flow that we selected. Again, it should say HR checklist, but it's the default create a case screen flow, which is fine. Uh, another way that we can see this is if I move over to this, um, this tab here, which is orchestration work items, which I've just added to the sales app, you could go into the... Uh, Need to over here and type in orchestration work items. And I've created a list uh, here, which is my open work items. And I can see anything that's been assigned to me. Okay. And if I need to action it, I just click on the context record, which is the contact in this case. And I go ahead and I complete my steps. So that's the two ways that you can then access the uh, screen flows that have been assigned to you as part of a flow orchestration. Okay. Let's jump back in. All right, so in summary, Flow Orchestrator isn't so much uh, a new declarative automation tool, but an extension of an existing one, which of course the Salesforce Flow. Now that it's generally available, it's gonna be great to see how admins and devs around the globe start to create value with it. Uh, remembering that the best way to create value is when you need a multi-step, multi-user complex automation, okay? There'll be times where using uh, traditional Flow you know, whether it's screen flow or an uh, automated flow, record triggered or scheduled or, or uh, whichever you need, 
will be better. Uh, you just need to assess whether it's sort of a multi-step, multi-user thing like this, or if it's a bit more um, simple. So quick intro uh, to Force Mastery. Force Mastery, like I said, is the business that I uh, have created. My goal is to create high quality content uh, for those who are learning Salesforce or who are wanting to read more, learn more about Salesforce. Um, if you are looking to get certified, we can help out there as well. Uh, yeah, basically reach out if you've got any questions related to Salesforce, to Flow, Flow Orchestrator, be happy to help out where I can. Finally, Salesforce Apex Hours. If you want to follow on Twitter, uh, follow the hashtag Salesforce Apex Hours and get involved in the conversation. You can also follow the account directly, which is at Apex Hours. Website there is apexhours.com. The LinkedIn is linkedin.com forward slash company forward slash Apex Hours. And finally, to jump on YouTube, it's bit.ly forward slash Apex Hours. I hope you uh, got some value out of that and learned how to use Flow Orchestrator. We're really keen to see how you. Hey, you end up using it.